Well, another day, another round of documents and revelations around Jeffrey Epstein. Now people who downplayed their relationship with Jeffrey Epstein are continuing to have the answer for it. The Wall Street Journal is out with part two of their sort of bombshell revelations about Jeffrey Epstein. First, it was his calendars. Now new documents are emerging about Bill Gates and Woody Allen and deeper dives on all of this stuff. And for that, we want to turn to investigative journalist Whitney Webb, who, of course, has been has written a two volume book on the deep state mafia and the Jeffrey Epstein connections and running the sort of government shadow government that we see and has been diving into these documents. Whitney joins us. You just wrote a new piece on Noam Chomsky and the questions surrounding you know, why was Noam Chomsky meeting with Jeffrey Epstein and those revelations. But first, like at a high level, Whitney, I just want to get your response to the second Wall Street Journal dumping of documents. And the other day I asked you when you were, you were on uh, earlier this week with the first round of this, you know, why now? Why are we learning about this now? And where did the Wall Street Journal get these documents? We were talking before the show a little bit here. Um, you have some new theories. I'd love to hear them. Yeah, so Wall, the Wall Street Journal, as far as, it, as you know, regarding how it got these documents, uh, as far as I've seen, there's been no transparency there, and none of the documents that they've reported on have been released, and it's still not clear how they obtained them or from whom and, or why it's coming out now. So uh, the second part that came out today that you're referring to has a lot of names that are not really that new in relation to the Epstein scandal. You know, people like Larry Summers, uh, Glenn and Ava Dubin, um, you know, Bill Gates, of course, you know, these are names that have been circulating around Epstein, uh, since at least 2019, if not earlier. Um, n now I've had a little more time to think about why they might be putting this out there now. And I think the answer may be to take heat off of the four billionaires who were subpoenaed as part of this U S Virgin Island, JP Morgan Epstein case, because those are very astounding. Um, so one of the more astounding ones, or the, there's two that really stick out there. One is Sergey Brin, the Google co-founder. Um, and the other one is uh, Michael Orvitz, who used to be head of Walt Disney and a top uh, talent agent for Hollywood. So, um, yeah, so the fact that those two individuals were subpoenaed by the USVI, which is in possession of lots of documents about Epstein's activities and JP Morgan and how they relate to his sex trafficking activities, the fact that they subpoenaed four billionaires, the other two are Thomas Pritzker of Hyatt Hotels, whose family has longstanding intelligence and organized crime connections that I detail in my book. Um, and then the other one is Mort Zuckerman, who bought the New York Daily News after Robert Maxwell's death, Maxwell having been the previous owner and Zuckerman was known to frequent Epstein's townhouse. You know, a lot of that isn't necessarily that revelatory on that end, but having the Google co-founder be that close to Epstein and having a former Walt Disney president being that close to Epstein are pretty significant. And as far as the Disney ties go, when Orvitz was head of Disney, um, the head of the Imagineering department at Disney was a guy named Bran Farron. And while Farron was in that role at Disney, he was advising the U.S. military, intelligence, all sorts of shady actors. And he brought to the Imagineering department close associates of Epstein, like Marvin Minsky and Danny Hillis, who were very closely involved with them. Um, the development of military supercomputers, uh, creating artificial intelligence, um, all sorts of very odd things. And the fact that they'd be involved in a company like Disney, which of course targets mainly children. Uh, and of course, Minsky was named, for example, as being a key part of the sex trafficking operations uh, by people like Virginia Dufre, for example. Um, you know, th this is pretty astounding. So the fact that we're having these names come out with the Wall Street Journal piece, you know, people are now instead talking about Noam Chomsky, talking about Bill Gates, um, and not talking about these people who have been subpoenaed in a legal case about Epstein's sex trafficking network. You know, no one's talking about them. Instead, it's talking about these meetings on their calendars, right? And so like someone like Chomsky, who, as far as the Wall Street Journal reported, had three meetings with him. That I don't see that as being as significant, for example, as you know these four billionaires who have been subpoenaed. But that's getting no coverage. So I would suspect it's to take heat off of some of these guys, if you ask me. Um, but then again, there are some important revelations here, and I think the bulk of those revelations, at least ones that are new, um, were in the first installment 
of this uh, recent round of Wall Street Journal reporting. But in the second piece, I do think it's pretty interesting that they keep bringing up the fact that Epstein was describing himself as being a money manager for Bill Gates. I think that definitely needs to be uh, pursued. And I think one of the reasons that mainstream media even will not do that isn't just because of how extensively Gates funds a lot of mainstream media outlets. Um, but it's also related to the fact that if you look at Epstein's history, he's tied to a series of Microsoft top executives who flew on his plane in the 1990s and who connected him with MIT uh, Media Lab, for example, um, and all sorts of other activities, you know, were very much involved with his, uh, what he was doing and apparently his sex trafficking activities. Actually, Nathan Merville, the chief technology officer of Microsoft who flew on Epstein's plane in the late 90s, uh, was named by Alan Dershowitz actually is a person that abused minors that Epstein trafficked. That's astounding. Um, and, and Alan Dershowitz, yeah, because, who won't even answer answer questions about it when, when confronted and asked questions about it. Yeah. Uh, so he know. says, oh, you know, you shouldn't, I didn't do anything with Virginia Roberts, Dershowitz, in, in this, this line, in this particular interview he gave. Uh, he said, you know, oh, I wasn't doing that. And then refers instead to like, maybe you should look at Nathan Merville. <laughs> who wow, Virginia Roberts wow. uh, had also named, right? So that's uh, very extreme, and there's been no interest in pursuing him, right? And he was, uh, you know, chief technology officer of Microsoft, uh, a very, very close to Bill Gates, obviously. And another um, top Microsoft executive, Linda Stone, uh, hired a woman from Epstein's entourage as her secretary um, and is the person that connected him to the MIT Media Lab, which if you believe a lot of what's in these Wall Street Journal revelations uh, was a key reason for a lot of these people, including Chomsky, uh, meeting with Epstein related to his activities in and around MIT. So I want to go uh, back again, to the... I think there's... Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I was going to say, I just want to go circle back on the Bill Gates piece of this. It is interesting to sure. your point that the four billionaires who are involved in this lawsuit, you know, in an effort to take the heat off of them. And I think you're absolutely right about that. That makes a lot of sense. But Bill Gates, keep his name keeps getting brought up and up and up. And I'm stunned by that. So I want to kind of go back to that point that they make in this piece. Gates has repeatedly said that he just liked to have dinner with Epstein, what, 36 times? Um, and then <laughs> these new reports show that he vetted legal counsel uh, that Epstein vetted legal counsel for the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and that he told people that he was, quote, managing money for Mr. Gates, which is really interesting. That seems to me a new revelation. Although spokespeople for Bill Gates continue to insist that Epstein totally misrepresented his relationship uh, when talking to other people. So what do you make of this Bill, these Bill Gates revelations? Yeah, so again, the mainstream media narrative refuses to say that the Epstein-Gates uh, relationship precedes 2011, which again, I think is all about protecting greater scrutiny of the Epstein-Microsoft ties and also the Maxwell family ties to Microsoft that took place around in the 1990s when that um, sort of team up took place. But the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation has a lot to answer for when it comes to Epstein, including before 2011. One of the top science advisors uh, for that foundation was a woman named Melanie Walker that Epstein recruited into his network in 1992. And she was his science advisor after he apparently uh, paid for some of her graduate studies. Um, and that was in the late 90s. And shortly thereafter, she has a brief stint with the World Health Organization and then is hired uh, to be a science advisor to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, uh, where she introduces Epstein to another science advisor of the Gates Foundation, Boris Nikolic. And if you remember, Boris Nikolic, when Epstein died, was actually the backup executor to Epstein's will. So why would Epstein have put Nikolic in that position? And these are all ties that predate Ep uh, Epstein and Gates' alleged first meeting per mainstream media in 2011. And then there's the added fact that UK mainstream media in the year 2000 said that Epstein made his his money because of his business links to uh, Donald Trump, Leslie Wixner, and Bill Gates. So how would they be able to say that Epstein made his millions by business tie through business ties with Bill Gates if they didn't meet for 10 years after the fact? Uh, it doesn't make any sense. And why would Gates hire someone like Melanie Walker, whose resume at that point was being science advisor for Jeffrey Epstein? You would have to know who Epstein Epstein was and what kind of science he was into. And of course, uh, there's a lot of overlap between the science that Epstein was into and the science that Bill Gates is into. Yeah, I think you're right about that. There's a, other, a few other names in this second report that I wanted to ask you about. Reed Hoffman, billionaire venture capitalist, LinkedIn co-founder, 
apparently visited Epstein's private island, um, and then it also stayed over in his Manhattan t- Manhattan townhouse. Woody Allen, as you mentioned, um, attended dozens of dinners with his wife at Epstein's mansion and went to Epstein, invited Epstein to his film screenings. Ehud Barak, the former Israeli prime minister, visited Epstein dozens of times and was on his private jet on a regular basis. And then Leon Black, the billionaire co-founder of private equity giant Apollo Global Management, more than 100 meetings with Epstein from 2013 to 2017. What do you make of those names? Oh, there's a lot of, well, there's a lot to say about all of those names because these are just uh, adding to the already known revelations about these people's ties with Epstein. So in the case of Leon Black, that was actually investigated by his investment or hedge fund, uh, Apollo Global Management, which he has since resigned from. But the person that investigated his ties uh, was a guy named Buzzy Krongard, who's an ex-CIA guy that was tied to insider trading on 9-11. So, I mean, it seems like that was probably... A big cover up, to say the very least. And Leon Black um, had in, entrusted uh, almost as much of his money uh, to Epstein as someone like Leslie Wexner had, you know, to a slightly lesser extent, was managing a lot of his estate, uh, was managing his tax planning, which again, Epstein's uh, role in tax planning for elites goes back to his time at Bear Stearns in the late 70s and early 80s when he was, uh, as you know, already engaged in financial criminality. And apparently helping billionaires, uh, you know, engage in mass tax evasion. So, you know, that obviously raises some question marks there. And Leon Black, along with uh, Glenn Dubin, were added to uh, the board of this uh, um, school at Harvard that Leslie Wexner essentially created through his uh, financing that David Gergen runs. Um at the Harvard Kennedy School, the Center for Public Leadership, which is openly allied with the World Economic Forum's Young Global Leaders Program, and a bunch of, you know, these Epstein cronies uh, and Wexner cronies, I guess, by extension, got added to the board. So you have like Dubin and uh, and and Black and, of course, Epstein and Larry Summers, a lot of people that pop up in the second part of this Wall Street Journal revelation all swimming around Harvard. And then you have the, the MIT connections popping up in both of these um recent revelations as well. So that's worth considering. Um, And as far as Ehud Barak goes, the Wall Street Journal declined to note that the Daily Beast, which is considered mainstream media, uh, reported that Barak was seen so frequently at the apartments where trafficked girls were housed, which is owned by OSA Properties, which um, involves a bunch of former Jeffrey Epstein employees and is run by his brother, Mark Epstein. Uh, uh, Barak spent the night there Um, You know, all sorts of dubious connections uh, between Barack and the sex trafficking scandal that did not make it into the Wall Street Journal report (laughs) and add some important context, uh, I think is pretty clear. And of course, um, when it comes to Woody Allen, I'm sure most people are uh, probably familiar with his past scandals, including the fact that his um, ex- Uh, partner, actress Mia Farrow, he is alleged, uh, and it's been extensively corroborated by witnesses and other sources, um, that he uh, sexually uh, molested his her adopted daughter, Dylan Farrow, uh, at least when she was seven years old, but according to court documents, took a sexual interest in her when she was between the ages of two and three. And his current wife is actually another one of Mia Farrow's adopted children, that Woody Allen met when she was a child, uh, though uh, this per- his current wife, Sunyi Previn, uh, maintains they didn't have their first quote-unquote friendly interaction until she was a teenager. And her re- uh, Woody Allen's relationship with Mia Farrow ended when she found nude uh, photographs of Sunyi Previn uh, in his house when she was, uh, I believe, 18 or 19 years old. So... Woody Allen and Jeffrey Epstein certainly seem to have had a lot in common, and that may explain why they uh, socialized so frequently, because obviously if you're familiar with the relationship between Sunyi Previn and Woody Allen, a lot of people probably didn't really want to be around that to an extent that we're actually against that type of activity, but certainly Epstein would not have been bothered by that, to say the very least. So I think that sort of explains... That's the, that's mm-hmm. his sick jam, sadly, sadly enough. That's what he, yeah, that was sadly what he was into. Um, unbelievable. So, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll get you out of here on this final question, which is in this latest round of documents um, or this latest, uh, re- these latest story from the Wall Street Journal, uh, are there still gaping holes that you would love for them to answer to, to fill in? Are there there's things yeah. that in your reporting that you would love for them to answer for here? 
Yeah, I would say release the documents. No one can verify what these documents are and what they say and what the Wall Street Journal is leaving out. Keep in mind, the Wall Street Journal, as, I'm, as, as far as I'm aware, is owned by News Corp, which is Rupert Murdoch, which recently fired Tucker Carlson for saying too much, right? So, right. you know. Uh, Especially it's about fair Epstein. To say that, yeah, specifically. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's it's fair to say that there's probably names here that they're keeping out of the limelight for whatever reason. Because keep in mind, you know, people like Rupert Murdoch have been involved in these uh, quote unquote deep state networks uh, for much of his media career. And he also had a very prominent feud uh, and rivalry with Robert Maxwell about buying, you know, building parallel media empires. So, you know, I wouldn't necessarily trust this guy or, you know, a mainstream media outlet like the Wall Street Journal. And I really think the best way forward is transparency with these documents, because according to the journal itself in these reports, it is they call it a trove of documents thousands of pages, not just of calendar of his calendar and his meetings and his schedules, but emails release the emails. Yeah. You know, and this is something that's come up time and again with reporting. Why can't you just release the emails or the source documents or any of the stuff? And it very rarely happens. Um, and uh, frankly, I think it's it's definitely time for greater visibility into not just the documents themselves, but who gave them to the Wall Street Journal. You know, there's a lot of unanswered questions here that, again, a lot of people don't seem interested in asking. And I go back to what I said earlier. I think, you know, why can't they mention uh, any of these big tech billions, especially with the Reed Hoffman revelations, right, of LinkedIn. Uh, he, Hoffman had been known to have taken Epstein to a big Silicon Valley meetup that involved people, uh, um, uh, some of the biggest names in Silicon Valley, Epstein, um, allegedly knew people like Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg, the biggest names in tech. You, of course, have Bill Gates and Microsoft. And now Sergey Brin has been subpoenaed and they don't note any of these Silicon Valley connections <laughs> in their reporting beyond just, oh, Reid Hoffman had more uh, meetings with Epstein than he was you know, open about. It's it's a bit odd. And even with the Chomsky revelations, actually Epstein had openly said that he had invited Chomsky to his home in an interview he gave uh, to a, a science magazine journalist in 2017. And he said the reason he invited Chomsky to his home was to explicitly discuss artificial intelligence. That didn't make it into the Wall Street Journal report. So Either they're not doing their homework or, you know, they're trying to give a very limited uh, scope of what these revelations contain. And again, you know, they'll say what the documents contain and then quickly give the statements uh, of these people distancing, distancing themselves from Epstein. But again, you know, as my work has shown and the work of others has shown, there's a much deeper story here. For sure. And Whitney Webb has a new article out on her website, unlimitedhangout.com, uh, unraveling the Epstein Chomsky relationship. So I encourage you all to go and read that. We will have that linked up in the description below as well. It's always great to catch up with you. Whitney Webb, investigative journalist, thank you so much for your insight and analysis on this. Thanks. My pleasure. And thanks for your interest in the story. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.